Welcome to the next video on the muscles of the anterior arm. The muscle that we're going to cover today is the brachialis. This muscle essentially means belonging to the arm. And as you can see, this muscle is going to lie more deep to the bicep brachii, which we've already covered. So the bicep brachii is going to sit over the top of it. This muscle is still a fusiform muscle, so it still has a big belly and tapers on each, each end. It has its origin at the at the top end and its insertion in the ulna. So firstly understanding where it originates, well it's here is the shaft of the humerus so at about the distal two-thirds or the lower two-thirds of the humerus is where it's going to start to attach or originate. The, the deltoids come in and sit kind of in this region so the deltoid tuberosity is going to be there whereas the brachialis is going to sit just below it and kind of occupy the shaft distal two-thirds of the humerus. As it starts to move down, the larger belly is going to be down at the lower one-third of the humerus as it starts to cross the joint. There would be a degree of attachment of this muscle in the capsule of the elbow, but the majority of it is going to cross and attach in the ulna. Now if you imagine the ulna is kind of like this C-shaped projection that sits in the humerus. So we've got the, the trochlear notch in here and sitting out here at this C-shaped portion, so right here is the coronoid process. And the coronoid process meaning hooked is where some of the brachialis will attach. So it sits on the coronoid and as we move kind of downwards, we have a roughened area right here known as the ulnar tuberosity. So where the brachialis attaches is going to be the originating in the distal two-thirds of the humerus and coming down with a bit of attachment in the capsule but mostly on the coronoid and, and the ulnar tuberosity. So we could put those in on the origin distal two-thirds of humerus and the insertion a combination of the coronoid. Coronoid essentially means hook which is that hook and, hooked part here which would articulate in the coronoid fossa of the humerus and the tuberosity, which is a roughened region of the ulna. So that's essentially where it's attached. In terms of the nervous innervation, now it is a primary flexor, so as we said in the bicep brachii video, it has to be innervated by the, an anterior portion of the plexus. So predominantly it's going to be innervated by the muscular cutaneous nerve, which is an anterior portion of the brachial plexus. So musculocutaneous, as we said, C5 to C6. However, there is a small degree of the lateral portion that has a radial nerve innervation. So if we look at the, the, your arm, and if you were to do an axial cut through the arm, the flexor compartment would be sitting at the front, and all of that compartment is supplied by an anterior portion. But the back part, which is the extensors in the arm, it's going to be the tricep, is going to be supplied by the posterior portion of the brachial plexus. So there is a degree of brachialis on the lateral part that would, if you did an axial slice through, which would be sitting behind that axial line, which means it's probably, from an embryological point of view, has migrated from the the posterior compartment or the extensor compartment and come anteriorly. So it's pulled its nerve with it. The brachioradialis is sitting there, so there is a degree of radial innervation on the lateral surface. So although the muscular cutaneous is most correct, there is a degree of radial nerve innervation, but it is very minor. In terms of the action, well, it's a primary elbow flexor, so it's much more powerful than the bicep brachii for flexing the elbow joint. The reason why that is, is because it attaches to the ulna. It's really irrelevant what your hands are doing during flexion. So unlike the bicep brachii, which is more powerful in supination, your hand position doesn't matter because it's going to be uh, flexing. So this is a powerful flexor regardless of hand position. So the primary flexor of the, of the elbow is going to be the brachialis. So powerful elbow flexor. Now there's also um, a degree, as I said, it attaches to a degree or blends into a bit of a capsule of the elbow joint. So there's probably also an action of 
pulling the capsule out during flexion to stop it getting caught up between the ulna and the humerus. So there's probably a degree of just pulling that capsule, which puckers up, then getting caught in the actual elbow joint itself. So that's also a minor action. But it's also important to note that uh, it, it works on cocentric and eccentric contraction. So it would be flexing during cocentric, but as you, like if you were drinking a cup of coffee on the upward phase, it's going to be in its cocentric phase, but to lower the cup down, it's going to be working eccentrically. So it, it also works eccentrically in extension. So hopefully now you know what the brachialis is, you know where it originates, where it inserts, the muscles, sorry, the nerve supply, and then finally, the take home point is it's a powerful elbow flexor and, and much more powerful than the bicep brachii, which assists this movement.